Absolutely. Well, you've also done some acting. The Perfect Man. I mean, I have to. Were you in scenes with La Locklear? Like, do you? You had scenes with Heather. I I never did a scene with Heather Locklear. Um, And looking back on that, I do remember that really well. It was like 2004 or five. We filmed it in Toronto with Chris Noth um, and uh, uh, Heather Locklear, Hilary Duff, Kim Whitley, um, uh, Christine, um, it'll come to me. Uh, But we had a great time making that movie, but I never ever worked with Locklear and I don't think I ever even saw her on set. And people will always say, how's that possible? I did a Christmas movie for Hallmark with Carrie Fisher. I never, ever saw her. I wasn't in any scenes with her and she just wasn't there the days that I was there. So it happens a lot. It does. As soon as I saw that, I was like, I just need to know if you had a scene with Miss Heather Locklear. I mean, no, no. And I was such a fan of Heather Locklear, obviously from you like TJ Hooker and she was on Dynasty for God's sake um and melrose place but i know i never got to see her melrose place was the best yes i've had donna mills on this podcast and i saw when she posted the thing about they're doing that thing in palm springs you yes. made a comment so you're obviously a knots landing fa- fan as well i'm a huge knots landing fan i loved it i loved all of the women um i love talking i i haven't talked to donna mills oh you know who i talk to sometimes on instagram the, of the same oove is Morgan Fairchild from, from Flamingo Road. That's a good one. Yeah, and she's so smart and, you know, like an amateur epidemiologist. So she had so many words of wisdom about um, the pandemic. So she's a good one to follow. But when is the Donna Mills um, Knott's Landing reunion in Palm Springs? I think it's like March or something. I, I looked it up and then I have a friend. I mean, I'm sure you can call someone and get in. I have a friend who knows Donna Mills and I'm like, no, you like need to actually pick up the phone and make this call. Cause like, I really want to go to this. Yeah. And it's like three days later and I'm like, no, no, no. Like you actually have to like really do this. Like I really want to be there. The thing, yeah, right? No, I, I want to go as well. And I think I probably looked up the date when I saw it and it's, you know, I'm probably like, I think I remember being like booked on something else and uh, ruining the day that I was going to miss it. But Michelle Lee is going to be there and Joan Van Ark. So you got the three biggies. You don't need anything else. What's no. it What's it like hanging out with Lisa Rinna? Um, Well, I haven't hung out with her lately, but we. Um, she's very involved in a charity that I'm involved with called Project Angel Food. And they deliver hot meals to people living with critical illness in and around Los Angeles County. And um, they always have a great event. And I always see her there. And um, we always have a great time uh, catching up. And if I just see her, she's she's just like a, like a family member or an old friend. Like, you know, you just um, always have a lovely time. And she always knows who you are. And she's just divine. This is the role that she was born to play. Absolutely. She's what, so good at it. You know, just when we thought all the drama was happening with Denise Richards, um, when they all went to like, where were they in Italy or something skiing? It was like some trip. Yeah. Was it I Italy? think it was Italy. Yeah. And they had that big showdown at dinner and Garcelle was defending Denise. And that's when we thought it was all, you know, so much drama. We had no idea what was coming down the pike. Um, with Erica Jane and all of that, which I'm still very unsure of. You are. I mean, just like un- with what she knows and what she doesn't know. It's just, I mean, it's definitely very unsavory. And, you know, uh, defrauding victims of a plane crash is like, does it get any worse? Um, but I don't really, I, I feel like we just don't know the full story yet. I, all these reunion answers just didn't seem complete the reunion was pretty harsh though right yeah it was it was i i um again it's hard to feel bad for somebody who potentially may have defrauded victims but i did feel bad for her at least andy did come 
ready to ask what we want asked. He did. He did. Yeah. It's, that's a hard job um, to be that direct. Um, so kudos to him for, you know, handling it so beautifully, I guess. Yeah. I think he did. Yeah. What about the new Queer Eye that's now back on, you know, yeah. when that started, like, did you get calls from like Tan and the other guys asking for advice? Yeah, we, um, uh, we didn't get calls from them. I don't think the producers of the original show, uh, called all of us and said, Hey, this reboot is happening. And I was like, Oh, when do we start? And they're like, no new cast. So I was like, what? Um, and they said, uh, we're going to do like a press shoot. I think and we did a press event with the new cast and we went to the premiere, um, with the new cast and we had drinks and like dinner the night before. And they got to, you know, ask us questions and we got to talk to them. And it was a very um, lovely handing of the baton. Well, you're very busy and you joke that you said, when do we start? But like, was any part of you like, wait, what? Like, this is my, this is my gig, honey. Um, you know, there's a part of you that takes immense pride and like, that was like your signature piece. So it is like, you know, taking a little baby and handing it over to somebody else. Um, but then I think when we saw how um, talented and wonderful the new cast was, um, I think we were all super comfortable with them um, taking over that mantle. I think Tan is really great. I think Anthony is so wonderful. Uh, uh, and Bobby has, I've known Bobby for a long time. So it's a group of all great guys. It is a group of all great guys. What about, because like the first installment was so successful. This installment is so successful. Like, what do you think it is about Queer Eye that just, you know, we have such a span of this many years and it's just yeah. it's still as successful. I think at the core, it's, you know, kindness and um, people that um, may seem very, very different, helping somebody else who seems very, very different actually finding that common ground. And I think that's the, the secret sauce maybe um, as to why it's done so well in both iterations. That makes a lot of sense. Before we wrap up, like you've done everything in this business, you've written books. Like, is there anything that you want to do still? That's still, I mean, on your list? Yes. Um, Chippendales. I mean, I don't really want to do the dancing. I just want to be there. There's nothing wrong with that. Maybe you could have like a little mini Vegas residency with yeah, like you. They, and... they used to do like celebrity Chippendales. Remember like Ian Zeering from 90210 did it. And, and Jeff Timmons other... from 98 Degrees. Right. And um, Joey Lawrence did it. So well, that's I, a good oh, one. I, my phone's ringing. Hello? Oh, it's Chippendales. Yeah, of course I'm available. I'll, I'll bring a bow tie. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. I guess it's happening. Listen, I, I'm just helping you get gigs here, Carson. I'm just putting it out into the world. You're so good. You should be my agent. But also before we go, you know, like I've seen you on the True Colors tour with like Cindy Lauper, like you've done, you know, you are like as a self-respecting gay man myself, like you've done so much for the community. You're such a great activist. You're such a great thank face so in the much. community. So, you know, thank you for that. You're welcome. I, that always makes me feel so great when people say that. And I always come back saying, listen, I was just being myself and doing me. And um, that's the power of um, being out and being yourself is that people sometimes see it and they say, oh, I, you know, I can do that too. So thank you. <laughs>